So, this is all about trying to break down how we experience, how we look at, how we see a really, really busy space in front of us. So the idea for me today is to show you how to reproduce on a piece of paper what we see in front of us. So it's all about us looking, okay? I'm breaking it all down for you and showing you everything step by step by step. <laughs> In this video, fabulous British artist Jan Fennelly is breaking down his own uh, technique while showing us uh, how to put it into practice on location on a Portuguese scene. I think it's pretty fascinating because just uh, by seeing the final result, you really wouldn't guess how it's done. I have been following Jan works for quite a few years and I had no clue about his process. So that's a bit kind of uh, the secret uncovered. So thank you so much Jan Fennelly for allowing and even encouraging this video. What a uh, generous artist and a teacher. I really encourage you to attend his workshop if you have the chance. You won't get bored, he's a really interesting and a funny man as you will be able to see in the video. You won't get overwhelmed because he's breaking down his technique with step by step and it's really understandable. So yeah, really recommended. Now I hand over to Jan who tells us about the journey of looking. And we're gonna look, to break it down, we're gonna try and look in three different ways, okay? So the first way that we're gonna look is we're gonna look at the big, big shapes the huge big picture. So we're thinking about composition, we're thinking about shape, we're thinking about structure, we're thinking about how it fits on the page, okay? Massive, massive shapes, big, big shapes, but three hours later, I'm gonna be drawing all the little bits of chewing gum and all the stains on the floor. That's a three hour journey. So it's a kind of one level of looking. It's not looking at the windows, it's not looking at the detail, not looking at the satellite dishes. So we're gonna put that, that down first and that's gonna be painted. So I'll model that for you. Okay, I'll show you how we do all of that. So that's the first thing. Okay, and that is probably all I'll do. And if you want to, do what I've done. Use a bit of brown, bit of blue, bit of yellow. Use whatever colours you want, okay? Doesn't really matter, because there's not that much tone going on at the moment. Now, the other two workshops I did, when people start painting first, a lot of people are really kind of like uncomfortable and like, like ah, I normally draw first. So some of you might be out of your comfort zone. But when we just start doing the brush pens, it's like, oh yeah, this is kind of okay. And then when we get the fine lining out, it's like, oh, this is great now. This is going to be, <laughs> everything's fine, everything's brilliant, okay? And you can guarantee that when you're working and you first start off, you know, when your picture looks a mess, you get loads of people around, don't you? You know, they all come and they start looking at what you're doing, you know, when you first start off. And in yeah. Liverpool, they've got these like really strong accents and they come up to you and they go, <laughs> Hey, are you an artist, are you? And you see, you see yeah, and you get really like nervous, you know. It's not very good, are you? <laughs> and then you think, well, please come back in two hours, you know, it like, looks quite good. By then, they, you know, they've gone up to go shopping or something. They always ask me after the first. <laughs> well, they always come up straight away, you know, when you first start off your picture, and it just looks an absolute mess like this. So, this is step one, right? This is going to be the hardest thing you've got to do today. Okay, this is the hardest bit where you're really out of your comfort zone. Now when that's dry, we're then going to use the brush pens. So the brush pens are all those kind of grey tone pens that I talked about, you know, on my proposal. So the, what the brush pens do is that helps our second layer of looking when we're starting to think about depth and shadows and things in front of other things. So it's starting to add a little bit more structure. If you kind of put them everywhere, you'll kind of muddy all the gorgeous colours you've got down. So what you need to do, can I borrow yours a moment? What you need to be really, really careful and mindful of is that some of the painting you've already put down, you want to really make sure you protect it 
you don't lose it. So for example, these gorgeous, gorgeous washers and the way these all blend together, you've got to make sure you don't just go over all of it with the grey pen, so you'll just lose it and you'll never get it back again. So with the brush pen, it's not the hardest part, but it's the, it's the stage where you've got to be really, really careful. And it's almost like you're just tweaking things out, just making things a little bit more realistic, adding a little bit of depth, okay? So that's the idea now. And it fits in with the second level of looking. Tell me what you're waiting for, what you're waiting for. Tell me what you're waiting for, what you're waiting for. Tell me what you're waiting for. What you waiting for? Tell me what you waiting for. I will never change. My fever conformer. And I will never change. My fever deformer. And the final thing is when we get all our pens out, and then suddenly everyone's like, phew, we can start drawing properly now. Okay? <laughs> Thank goodness for that, we get the pens out. And when we do the pens, that's when we really smash the detail, okay? But the other two steps give us a structure. The watercolour paint and the brush pens gives us a shape and a structure to then really start hammering things like satellite dishes and the lamps and the tiles and if you want to put the parasols in and the little statue up there and that little pigeon if he's still there in about two and a half hours which he probably won't be so the pens really help us to focus on what's going on and it's this journey of looking 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 the more we look the more we see and the more we kind of get what's going on so it's all about real observation now so you've all got the structures down they look amazing Got lots of lovely colours, lots of lovely shapes, so we can use these fine liners. I'm just going to do a little bit of demonstrating for you, all right? I'll show you what I'm going to be doing, just to give you an indication of the kind of things I'm looking for. So, guys, I could draw for hours. These three things, the watercolour paint, the brush pens and the pens, the fine liners, they all determine how we look and how we see. So it's all about us on location, looking and experiencing what we do. So it's all different levels of looking. So the last thing I noticed, the last thing I noticed was this little guy here. It, oh, took, yeah. me, it took me two hours to see him <laughs> because my drawings are a record of me looking at something for two hours, okay? So it's a record of me looking. And the more you look, the more, the more you see, okay? The more you look, the more you see, the more you understand. That's the key thing. And it's a journey of looking. Thanks a lot, Jan. And for your holiday, or if you are leaving for Amsterdam, feel free to check this video I did last year about some traveling essentials that changed a bit of my life. Along, if you like, with my urban sketching playlist to sketch more and more during summer. See you really soon.